The mother of all tsunamis and a massive underwater earthquake could occur in the Cascadia subduction zone. This would bring unprecedented destruction and it's overdue. We'll take a look at why this is happening and when we should expect such an event. So be sure to stay tuned to the end and if you like it, I'll be galactically happy to get a thumbs up and a comment because that's how we get the algorithm to show this important topic to even more people. Thank you friends and welcome. You probably remember the scene with the giant wave from the movie Interstellar, right? The tsunamis in the movie were bigger than any mountain on Earth. Even though that was just a movie, the real tsunamis on our planet are of course also incredibly terrifying and they can cause huge damage and destroy entire coastlines. The formation of tsunamis is linked to how the Earth's tectonic plates move, especially in areas called subduction zones. One of these, the Cascadia subduction zone, which stretches from southern Canada to northern California, is particularly dangerous in this respect and could cause the mother of all tsunamis. But first, let's find out exactly what a tsunami is. A tsunami is basically a series of oceanic waves caused by sudden movements of the sea floor, usually by underwater earthquakes, landslides, volcanic eruptions, or theoretically meteorite impacts. These sudden movements lead to a massive displacement of water, creating waves that can propagate in all directions. Tsunamis can travel extremely slowly in the open ocean and be only a few centimeters high, but when they approach the coast and reach shallower water, they can reach enormous heights and cause devastating floods. Such phenomena are also described as the so-called ripple effect. This occurs when an initial disturbance of a system spreads further and further to disturb an ever larger part of the system, just like waves that spread across the water when an object falls into the water. And the initially small waves then become a gigantic tsunami over time. You can imagine it a bit like the waves in a coffee cup. If you blow on it gently, it creates even waves that quickly subside. But if you move the cup suddenly, much larger and more chaotic waves are created. And in the case of the Earth, such jerky movements are usually caused by tectonic movements and that brings us to the Cascadia subduction zone, the plate boundaries between the Juan de Fuca plate and the North American plate. It is part of the Pacific Ring of Fire and is responsible for the activity of the Cascadia volcanoes, a series of volcanoes in North America such as Mount Rania in the US state of Washington. Its last documented eruption took place in 1843. The movements of the Cascadia subduction zone have caused devastating disasters in the past. The Cascadia earthquake of 1700 is particularly well known with a magnitude on the Richter scale of 8.7 to 9.2, i.e. not much more. This sea quake caused a gigantic tsunami which did not hit the American coast but Japan. As the cause of the tsunami far away in America could not be imagined at the time and there had been no previous smaller earthquakes in Japan that could have indicated this, it went down in Japanese history as the orphan tsunami, i.e. a tsunami without a recognizable origin. The tsunami waves reached a height of up to 10 meters and destroyed large parts of the Japanese coastal communities. Now it's getting worrying. Such an event will happen again and it is overdue. The calculated average time between major earthquakes in the Cascadia subduction zone is between 200 and 220 years based on data from the last 3,000 years that geophysicists have been able to analyze. The orphan tsunami happened 324 years ago. I'm not good at math, but that means we should probably expect it relatively soon. The American geologist Rob Witter has done a lot of work on this and says, People will not be prepared for this situation. Even if they are prepared, they will be surprised by the extent of the devastation. What exactly should we expect? Such a large plate movement that would trigger such a massive tsunami is called a mega thrust earthquake. This event is caused by the sudden release of pent up stress when the plates along the subduction zone give way abruptly. In such subduction zones, the Earth's crust can break in one go over hundreds of kilometers and shift by several meters. And as we already know, such mega thrust earthquakes along the Cascadia subduction zone have the potential to reach a considerable magnitude. Potentially over 9 on the Richter scale, this earthquake or seaquake alone would have the potential to cause significant damage to the US West Coast. But the even greater threat is the tsunami that would result. If a mega thrust earthquake occurs along the subduction zone, it could massively disturb the surrounding water and trigger a super tsunami. And current research shows that this tsunami would far exceed wave heights of 10 meters. A mega thrust earthquake along the Cascadia boundary could trigger a tsunami that would devastate coastal communities along the Pacific coast with waves exceeding 30 meters. Rob Witter says, the numerical models predict that tsunamis in Oregon could reach heights of 
25 to 30 meters, which would be comparable to the Sumatra tsunami, we need to be very careful and prepare for this event. It may not happen in our lifetime, but if it does, it will be akin to a Katrina-like event. By Katrina, he's referring to the hurricane that brought unprecedented destruction to the southeast of the USA in 2005. It is considered one of the most devastating natural disasters in the history of the United States. And of course, it is not only the USA that is threatened by a Cascadia tsunami, but also Japan and other Pacific Rim countries, as the past has shown. Now, the difficult question arises, how can such an event be predicted with a reasonable degree of accuracy? Geologists determine the period in which these Cascadia earthquakes occur using sediments stored in undersea canyons off the Pacific coast. This is because when a sea quake triggers a tsunami, landslides occur underwater and huge amounts of material flow down into these ocean canyons. The mud stirred up as a result is then deposited in a layer known as turbidite. This turbidite is therefore the key to researching sea quakes and above all, to assessing the risk for the future. Marine geologist Chris Goldfinger describes it like this. Because there have been no recent large earthquakes along Cascadia, the entire earthquake record is based on several decades of paleoseismic work. Precisely dating the deposits is crucial, because if turbidite of the same age is found in many places, this indicates a widespread, i.e. strong earthquake. The turbidite studies are a little worrying because in terms of deposits, the 1700 earthquake is only average in terms of turbidite thickness and mass compared to 19 similar ruptures. In the last 10,000 years, about half a dozen turbidites are larger than the 1700 event and half a dozen are a smaller. In other words, there have probably been considerably more violent quarkies and therefore more violent tsunamis of which we only have no records because they are far in the past. The next event could therefore far exceed the orphan tsunami of 1700. But when will it happen? Scientists, as we have now learned, have made significant progress in collecting data on past events along the Cascadia subduction zone. These data, along with modeling and monitoring techniques, have helped to better understand the potential and impact of a future event. But an accurate prediction that's impossible with our current technology. The nature of plate tectonics and seismic activity makes it super difficult to make accurate predictions about earthquakes. There is simply no clear pattern or time sequence making the prediction of specific earthquake events along the Cascadia subduction zone an impossible endeavor. What can be done is to rely on early warning systems and above all to train the population if a tsunami does occur. But there is some doubt as to whether the population will be prepared. I saw comments like this one under the video of another YouTube video. I am in Canada and we are in complete denial of this danger. Zero preparation for this great danger and no debate. Or I live Cannon Beach, Oregon. The complacency is shocking. There seems to be a very strong fingers in the ears la 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 inertia to do nothing to prepare while deluding yourself that you are prepared. Let's hope for the best anyway. I'll keep you posted as soon as something stirs in the Cascadia subduction zone. But of course, you can only do that if you subscribe to my channel. It's absolutely free, you'll never miss another galactic video, and it helps me immensely to reach more viewers. So everyone, press the subscribe button, thank you very much. Not only plate tectonics has an influence on the world's oceans, but also our moon. NASA has now discovered something incredible beneath the surface inside the moon. To travel together to our satellite, click on the video above right, very, very exciting. And if you want to support my work, I'm always happy when you drop by my Astro Store. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, friends.